Hey guys, welcome to the Let's Talk Paralegal podcast. This is actually going to be the first episode that we launch for season two. So congratulations on making it on the first intro episode. And I am, as I was saying before the recording, I am so stoked. This is literally my vision coming to life, having all you wonderful legal professionals in one virtual room. Maybe one day we'll sit in the same room, who knows? Um, But for now, this will do. Um, And so just a quick, for those of you that are listening, I'm going to do a little quick round here. We have Bianca Morera, Jacqueline Foster, um, Kristen Corpian, Steven Sanchez, Nate, Misty, Adam. Okay, y'all can have their full names in the description once I put it in there, but that's pretty much all my go-to people and my uh, heart and soul when it comes to networking. So thank you very much for ha- for coming on and supporting the Let's Talk Paralegal podcast. Um, and I know you guys are going to bring a lot of stuff. We have great topics today. So why don't we just get to it? Um, the first one is, where do you want in the legal industry now? Now after the pandemic, now after everything We're not getting to normal because it looks like it's going to get worse (laughs) before it gets better. But now that we're in this new world uh, legal industry, what are your thoughts on where where you see the legal industry actually headed? Well, do you want to call on someone in particular or are we all going to chime in on this? Oh, Missy, you already started talking, so go for it. Yeah, right? (laughs) Um, I I, I think because, you know, of the, the pandemic, I see two things happening. Um, I see, you know, the need rising um, to help with the justice gap, to provide more cost-effective representation to the people who need it. Um, And I I see our industry heading that way and and us being able to provide those sort of, you know, smaller solutions um, and and help people who, who truly need it. Um, The other thing that I see is I see that as as a result of this pandemic, um, attorneys were sort of forced to see that we aren't required to be tangible objects in an office. We can work remotely, we can work as freelancers, and we can be just as productive outside of the office as we were inside of the office all these years. In fact, more so because we're not talking at the water cooler anymore. I so love I, it. You know, I think between those two things, I think we're going to see um, a lot of entrepreneurs out of this, a lot more innovators coming out of this. I was called an industry disruptor a few days ago. There, there's this, I love it. I'm already now and down. <laughs> there's this article coming out and they were like, we'd really like to feature you in this new article for an industry disruptor. And I was like, I don't know if I want to call myself a disruptor. I don't say, I wouldn't say I'm an industry disruptor, but I'm definitely an industry innovator and um, in trying to find more cost-effective solutions. And so that's where I see the legal industry heading. Awesome. Bianca, I'm curious because you bring the administrative aspect and the business consulting aspect of it. And you've kind of always been a freelancer and always had that independence, um, so to speak. So I'm curious your thoughts on this topic. Well, I like that we started with Misty with something so positive because (laughs) more turmoil out there in the law offices. And right now I'm in about seven different law firms. And although the plus is that people are working maybe harder and longer. They're not working always nine to five. And it's very evident when you make a phone call, it's very evident when your phone call doesn't get returned. And that's a real big disruptor, to use (laughs) Misty's word, uh, bringing back the quasi-virtual hybrid is very difficult. I will tell you, I share a quick story. I've had people at 11 o'clock like go zombie on me and I'm, what are you doing? Oh, I'm, I'm listening to my favorite podcast. It's every day. <laughs> my man, is it mine? <laughs> and then seeing employees get up from their desk MIA in the middle of the day because they have to take their walk. Ah. So those are the negatives that are happening and readjusting. And there is a level of tolerance that's not being made 
more so from the employee side than from mm. the employer side, almost to a, to such a situation where COVID is more than just an illness, it's an attitude. Ooh, I like that. Steven, I'm curious as to what you have to say because I, you've always been in the office, right? I mean, every time I see you, you're in your office. So I don't think COVID has ever uh, <laughs> done anything for you. <laughs> I'm curious to see what you think about it. Yeah, so you're right, Etta. Um, I'm not sure if it's good or bad, but I just have never been able to work from home. So I'm always, have always been in the office throughout this entire period of time. I find that I'm more productive here at the office, less distractions for me. I feel like I've got all my equipment set up the way I want. So it just works better for me. Um, awesome. And, you know, I, I think that, while that's worked for me, I, I can understand what Misty and Bianca have said. Uh, certainly, um, I do think that uh, it's important to to be a, a hybrid nowadays. And, and I know, Ada, you and I have talked about the fact that it's about versatility nowadays, uh, more so than ever before. Um, because we're not in the office, some of us need to be more visible. And whether that's with your your own current employer, whether it's your your business that you run, or whether it's you trying to potentially get on with a prospective employer. You have to be able to show who you are and, and where you are and the places you can be found and, and what you're involved in. And um, we've talked about this a number of times, you and I. I think it's just critical nowadays that you have to be able to be versatile as well. And that means being able to do a lot of different things. Um, I mean, on my end, so my, my firm, I'm a paralegal investigator. I also am involved in a lot of professional associations. Um, I do business development for the firm. I do a lot of different things. And you know what? I I'm glad I do because um, I think nowadays that's, that's where this business is headed. And by the way, that same goes for the lawyers that are you know, involved in some of the practices that, that I deal with. And you do a lot of different things. And that's how you um, are effective, I think, nowadays. And that's where I, I see this business continuing to go in that direction. Talking about lawyers, Kristen, our golden girl here, she's a entrepreneur attorney. Um, like I said, I, a word that I'm not going to say live, but she is <laughs> rocking it. Um, what are your thoughts? I'm curious as an attorney and as an innovator, you know, because you're very forward thinking, which is what I love about you. So I'm really curious to see what your thoughts on the matter are. So many things. I think from the standpoint of the employer and of the law firm owner, right now I'm leading a team of, team of 10 and I'm very focused on learning what I can about how do you grow and lead a high performing team. And I think that mm -hmm. uh, the legal industry in general, um, prior to COVID, could have used some better um, systems and ideas around building in that cohesion and really thinking through traditional business principles, the way that Fortune 500 companies are thinking about retaining talent and onboarding talent. A lot of times, unfortunately, present company excluded, um, you know, law firm owners tend to disregard some of these, some of these important areas. And I feel like now there's going to be more pressure with this digital environment to create certain things. And I'll give you examples, right? Before it was, we can't do a digital team because we can't manage them. I don't think that that's true, but what you do need one way or the other are clear lists of KPIs, clear management channels, so that whether you're digital or in-person or whatever you know your flavor of ice cream is, you are actually managing people and ensuring that they're doing what you said they needed to do. And I just don't see enough of that in our industry. And I think right now there's some level of like throwing up of the hands. We don't know how to manage all these things here at, at law firms. And all we really need to do is start by writing them down and developing policies, procedures, systems. They can work whether they're digital or not. I think there has to be intentionality around if you are going to be a fully digital firm, thinking about how you're building cohesion digitally. Some folks that I know have been onboarded at new law firms, big and small, and they've never in person met anyone. So wow. how are you going to, you know, build that connection, get to know someone when you're not really going to coffee with them and you can only do so many like digital happy hours it's not really the same. So I think if we could see a little bit more 
of that hybrid model, um, I, I, I expect to see it because I don't know how else you could build that cohesion 100% digital. And I think the way bigger companies or different companies do it is maybe you have a biannual team meeting, quarterly team meeting, something like that, where you actually are seeing in-person connectivity. We can't discount the human aspect of, of all of this, but whatever happens, I think that law firm owners who usually, I think, tend to fall into the trap of only seeing themselves as practitioners, you know, also have to think through the business side of this and how you're going to build in the systems to make this work for your team. It can be really lonely, I think, to be a junior lawyer in general. Um, I'm not that anymore, but I talk with a lot of junior lawyers and then to be fully onboarded and never like, actually meet your boss. That's, that could be a little bit weird. So I think talking that, about onboarding, these are great segues, by the way. Jacqueline is our onboarding guru. She that's what she does for law firms and she does staff all that good stuff. So tell us about that. Tell us how that's going, by the way. Well, first, before I kind of go into my thoughts on it, I kind of want to echo Kristen. I think that going virtual is going to expose every single weakness in your law firm. Every single one. The moment you decide to go virtual, bam, everything you didn't know what was wrong, you're going to see it now. And that's pr prior to COVID, prior to the pandemic, that has deterred law firms from going virtual, even though the numbers, even though the practicality of the access to incredible talent all over the nation, not being confined to your geographical area, not confining people to one geographical area, whether family moves them away, military spouses, whatever that looks like, you're not confined anymore. They've pulled away from that because they don't want to expose those weaknesses. They're in the stage of avoidance. And I was contracting and going virtual for two, three years before the pandemic hit. And then when the pandemic hit, it's like, we have no other option but to do this. And so I think it's really interesting because, and I, I don't ever say this to like offend the legal industry. I'm a trade by trade paralegal. That's what I did for many years before I went into this space is the legal industry is so stuck in their ways. They're so mm. stuck in the brown accordion files and the pencil skirts to law to, to, to court and to look old traditional, like we you know wrote the constitution type of status. And which is phenomenal, but look at Google, Amazon, Facebook, multi-billion dollar companies have been leveraging the concept of keeping their employees, their contractors in their zone of genius forever. And the reason why that that is so lucrative and law firms need to realize how lucrative it is to allow paralegals, legal staff alike, lawyers, associates to stay in their zone of genius is by removing the fluff. And the fluff sometimes comes from focusing on them being infirm, wearing all the hats, doing all the things. And that fluff that these the legal staff is having to manage and deal with is what is causing burnout. It's causing burnouts for lawyers. They're having to handle all the stuff, all the things all the time because they don't see a different way. And that different way is to allow professionals across the nation to be in their zone of genius. We have paralegal investigators in here. We have access to tech gurus. We have access to consultants, um, freelance lawyers, freelance paralegals, freelance legal administrators, virtual assistants, um, bookkeepers, accountants, marketers. I mean, you name it, you can do it. You can build an empire with a group of people just stuck in their zone of genius, which is gonna make them happier. It's gonna make retention in your firm stretch farther. And it's really at the end of the day, going to give your biggest return on investment, which truthfully going back to like the question of where's the legal industry headed and, and not being a spoiler to your segment, but to say, and going back to Misty's conversation, the gap to justice is so big because lawyers are so stuck in their ways and they cannot figure out how to make operating a law firm for a more profitable and more um, efficient. And to then pass on those benefits to their clients. I love it. I love it. And talking about the tech, I think Adam and Nate can echo with the tech because you guys do a lot of um, deposition, court reporting, all that good stuff. And I know Adam, you personally reached out to me on a project that you were doing specifically for paralegals and removing the fluff. So if you can talk first and then Nate um, can you know, put in his two cents, I, I want to give an opportunity for everyone. But I know particularly that project 
because you presented it to me. So I want you to kind right. of, I know you have a lot to say about that. <laughs> right. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Uh, so uh, Kristen and Jacqueline, I really loved what the two of you had to say. Uh, all of it. Uh, it totally right on the mark. So I couldn't agree more with all those points. Um, if you want me to focus on that one, that one component, either that's, well, you that's don't have to, but I know that you have uh, a lot of passion in that. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we're, we're, we're all about efficiencies. So we've been, we've been doing uh, litigation support court reporting. And as you mentioned, uh, also ADA compliance, so that's card captioning and uh, American Sign Language and multitude of other services in that space for uh, for 40 years. So uh, just like probably Nate is gonna say and a couple of others uh, on the team here, we've been doing things remotely for over a decade. So for us doing things remotely is kind of the ideal modus operandi uh, and it has been for, for years. Uh, so really COVID has ushered in something completely new and completely fresh and very positive, I think, for the legal community, for both paralegals and uh, law firms, and for vendors like like ourselves, uh, because it's it's suddenly uh, unleashed endless resources. We we have access to resources worldwide, uh, nationwide, uh, worldwide, and if we're organized well enough and efficiently enough, we can take advantage. All of us can take advantage of those resources, and I think that was um, unseen before COVID. I think the majority of attorneys, uh, which make up the majority of our clients really, uh, uh, and we've been working with them, as I said, for, for 40 years, you know, for decades, uh, we see them up until this past year, we've seen them stuck in their ways. They, they didn't want to do anything remotely. Uh, they were afraid of it, uh, even though we have a robust tech support team that's helping them through doing demos for them for free. Uh, it's, it's all free. Uh, and, and we have, you know, this robust online repository that everything is very simple. Um, we do it all for them, but they still like it the old way. And I just think to, to Kristen's point and, and Jacqueline's point, I think that there's no going back. I think the remote revolution is here to stay. And even if some people go back, uh, maybe old timers or, or people who just like it traditionally, I, I think the majority, the trend, and that's what we're talking about today. I think the trend has shifted for good. And I, I think they don't become blockbuster. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? Let's just hope they don't become blockbuster for not yeah. innovating. <laughs> um, Nate, you wanted to say something. I saw you raise your yeah, hand. Yeah, absolutely. Well, great points made by all. And uh, Adam, I, I couldn't agree more uh, with, with what you said. Um, and without uh, being redundant, um, I, I probably would say a lot of the same that he does and you know in my opinion though we're trending back to normalcy delta variant aside you know the legal industry landscape is forever changed by covid i mean that's just the, the way it is so but now we're seeing as a derivative of that uh consul uh cons consolidation <laughs> a tough word to say for me it's okay we're, uh, all, we're all tired it's the end yeah, of the <laughs> uh, consolidation of uh, office space uh there's an acceptance of uh, work from home policies that you never saw before um, there's the global adoption of remote depositions and proceedings as a norm or as an, as an accepted and preferred option to take the legal record moving forward. And as Adam said, you know, folks in our space have been doing remote depots for, for 10 years. So this is nothing, this is nothing new to us. Maybe it's new yeah. to a lot of other folks, but, you know, we're on the side of getting people up to speed and, and training and getting them to, to adopt it. Um, but I also think there's a new level of expectation by of, of expectation by attorneys and paralegals, right. especially in, um, in regards to support services and what's out there. And that's just going to stay as well. You know, some of us have adap adopt, adapted to provide certain services, but now that's going to be the ex expectation uh, rather than the norm. Um, but I also see that there's a new view of sensitivity to the work-life balance, um, especially in regards to younger folks, uh, family-focused legal professionals, and uh, those who have entered the industry uh, during COVID or, or, or just before. So like I said, without sounding too redundant and touching on everything else, I, I completely agree with everybody on the call. So Awesome. All right, so let's go to our second Can I ask a question, uh, Eden? Oh, go ahead. To, to, to Nate, actually, to Nate and a few of uh, the previous people who spoke, is it, this could go two ways. Uh, mm -hmm. do, you, do you guys see, um, uh, do you see this consolidation that you were talking about, Nate? Do you see that resulting in 
clients in the legal field moving towards vendors that are a one-stop shop where they have an entire package of you know tech support court reporting uh interpreting uh yeah, etc or, or do you think that they're going to go move out to multiple freelance vendors no i i, I think um, there is a benefit to uh keeping everything under under one roof as, yeah. as long as a service is the is an acceptable and, and strong level yeah um, you know from you know efficiencies like you said familiarity with a particular case and just time having to hunt down various vendors you right. know to, to put something together so if a vendor can provide everything at a very high level of service i think there's a benefit to the client to, to be able to do that um but you know you you don't want to step too far over your over your skis and offer something that you know you can't deliver on so you know if, if you are going to go down that route i would highly you know um vet the resources you know to make sure that you are getting what you're you're asking for um you know not just trying to keep it convenient and i think christian i'm like i'm like i love the question okay just three uh, three highlights for vendors and for other software platforms one integrations matter Mm -hmm. We're using Clio for everything. We use LawPay for this or this for that. And whenever I see an integration, I'm like, oh, thank you. Wonderful. Everything's going to play together nicely. It's going to make it easier for my team to use. Right. Two, user-friendly platforms. There are a lot of different vendors that we've used um, for, let's say, court reporting. And mm -hmm. they have their own platforms, but they're difficult to use, clunky. My team is not at all shy about saying, like, this platform sucks. I don't know how to use it. And then all I'm going to hear is complaints about how difficult it's making their life, which makes my life difficult, which makes me want to use a different service. And then third, tech support. I want to talk to a human being. And I understand from a business side that like tech support is expensive and costly, but I'd even be willing to pay more per, per you know opportunity for you to teach my team what they need to know rather than giving me like a BS response and email that we could have figured it out ourselves. Yeah, you shouldn't even have to ask for it. You should get a free demo. You should have a tech support team member right there at your side, uh, even free of charge. You know, there should be a certain baseline of, of support that you get. Maybe pre-COVID, maybe that wasn't justified. But now, uh, those times have changed. You, you need to have that support. Seamless right now, and I agree with you on that, on Adam, Nate. Um, it's, it's a new industry. And I have a whole thing on technology, but we can go on for that hour. And you're um, right. So, it, it, is, it is an industry standard. You're right, Adam. That, that should be the case. And the whole goal should really make sure that everybody feels comfortable moving into, let's say, a remote deposition, yes. moving forward, that there aren't any questions out there. This is a new area. There is going to be some handholding. There is going to be a learning curve for, for all ages and all levels of the spectrum. So that's what you should be looking for as, you're right, the industry standard moving forward from your vendors, whether it be court reporting or, or anything else that's going to require new technology. Okay.